Welcome back to the channel and today I want to do some more testing with the rockets and trail makers. Now the test I'm most looking forward to is seeing if I launch a rocket backwards from a vehicle that is going at the launch speed of a rocket will the rocket drop straight to the ground or will it actually accelerate away from the vehicle relative to a stationary observer? And uh, I've actually done a little bit of testing here. This thing on the back of my seat is a test to see how am I going to actually observe this experiment? Because I need to be a stationary observer to see if the rocket is moving after it gets released or if it just falls straight down. And that is a camera block over there. And uh, when I press the button for the camera block, you can see it actually works. So I'm essentially gonna have to add a backwards facing rocket launcher to this vehicle. And what we've already found out that rockets uh, launch at around 285 kilometers an hour. And this vehicle is designed to cap out around there. So I'm gonna have to drive 285 kilometers an hour at this uh, camera and then switch over and then have it launch right in front of the camera and see what happens. So that's the plan for that experiment, but there are a couple of easier experiments I wanna do first with these rockets. Uh, the first one is, can a rocket hit a rocket? Now, my hunch is that the rockets are not, well, it's weird. I, my hunch is that the rockets are not collidable objects, but the entire point of a rocket is to collide with other objects. But is the rocket itself one of those uh, all right, this made it, it made more sense in my head. Now that I'm saying out loud, this doesn't make any sense at all. But I have reason to believe that ammunition does not collide with rockets, and rockets are ammunition. All right, I don't know why I built this so big, but this should work perfectly fine. So when I press the rocket button, these rockets should fire at each other, and because they're also on the same level, uh, they should drop at the same rate, and they should meet each other in the middle, basically. But is that gonna result in an explosion? Let's find out. In three, two, one, launch. Oh my goodness, it did result in, oh wow. It did result in an explosion, not the explosion I was hoping for. So as you can clearly see, those rockets go right through each other. Let's get a couple of views of this. Oh, what? There wasn't an explosion that time. Huh. So this is not uh, giving me good hope for the next test. The next test I wanted to do was, uh, can machine gun fire explode a rocket? So if someone shoots a rocket at you and you just aim well enough with your machine guns, are you able to stop the rocket before it gets to you? Uh, based off of what I just saw, I am guessing no. So this one is also, uh, potentially very easy to test. So I'm gonna take some mini guns. I'm gonna face them straight down right where this, the path of this rocket is. All right, there we go. I noticed that the rocket was kind of at the edge of the mini gun. So I put two sets of mini guns. So we should guarantee be firing at this rocket. Let's see here. Oh, well that's, that, that's laggy. It's also a little bit disappointing that uh, there's a huge amount of smoke, but here we go. All right, if none of those bullets hit the rocket, I'd be very, very surprised. Man, I cannot believe how laggy. I've never done this many miniguns. I can't believe how laggy that is. But as you can see, the rocket goes through completely unscathed. So if you've ever wondered if you can shoot rockets with things, the answer is clearly no. Okay, now on to the difficult test. I've essentially got to uh, redesign this thing to have a couple of extra functions. One being it has to be able to launch a rocket, which is gonna definitely change my aerodynamics. The other being I need to be able to deploy a remote controlled camera that I'm going to use. And the other one being I have to be able to automatically launch that rocket precisely when I pass the camera. So that is a lot going into this experiment that needs to work correctly. Okay, first things first though, let's slap a rocket to this thing. Now I'm actually, if, in order for this to be the most interesting, we really should have the rocket be elevated. The main reason we need the rocket elevated is because the whole point of this is to see if it drops straight down. And if it doesn't have any distance to go down, it's not gonna be that interesting to watch. All right, here we go. We have rocket now. Rocket launches. Oh, we can actually kind of see here. What? It's already, it's already kind of working. I mean, it should, but by, by, by the looks of it, 
that thing is falling straight down. I think the only little variance right now is because my air brakes that keep me at around 280 kilometers an hour, uh, you can see my speed is fluctuating up and down. So let me see if I can dial in this thing so that I can go exactly at the launch speed, which I think is about 280. All right, so I've made an interesting modification here with my uh, air brakes. So the air brakes are no longer dependent on my speed. They now go to a defined angle and they start three seconds after I go. So now you can see they are just sitting there at that angle. And that angle keeps me, as you can see, around 278. And when I launch, it looks like there might be some distance. It's really hard to tell uh, from this uh, from this perspective, though. I'll have to have the stationary camera working for me. So for the stationary camera, I'm going to need another seat because the seat is what's going to keep the controls working. I'll put this on an anchor block so it stays right into the ground. Then I will use a logic gate that controls uh, the camera itself. And this camera is going to be at about the height of the rocket. All right, let's see if this works. So I should be able to press shift to detach. There we go. Uh, and then I should be able to press one to go to that camera. Let's see how that camera is compared to the height of our vehicle here. All right, there we go. So we drive by, we should see this rocket fall right where we are. Oh my goodness, look at this. When I get far enough this way, the rocket aims right at me. So now the only thing missing is uh, the ability to automatically fire the rocket. So the rocket control is going to come from a sensor. So this distance sensor. Oh, is that going to... All right. So obviously I will need a little bit of a buffer for this distance sensor. I'll have a buffer on either side. So the distance sensor should detect this. All right. Let's do a quick test to see if this works in theory. So that detaches. If I drive like this... Okay, that did fire the rocket. All right, and I think that works no matter what direction I'm coming from because I have a sensor on both sides. Let me just do a quick test right here. All right, we are ready. We are ready to test this. So if I follow this black line, I should be good to go. All right, let's hope the speed cap works. Here we go. All right, 280. I'm switching to the camera. <laughs> this is great. So it looks like I need to go maybe like one or two kilometers an hour uh, just faster because it seems to go backwards a little bit. So let me just dial that in real quick. So the way I'm going to do that is if I need to go a little bit faster, I'm going to have this angle be less by like it's going to go from 42 to 41 degrees. Okay, not that much. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go even even more. 281. So that's pretty much what I wanted. All right, I think I'm somewhere around this black line right here. So let me, I'm just gonna follow. Oh, I'm just gonna follow back this way. I think the camera's facing this way. All right, let's swap to the camera. That's it. It works. Just like when the Mythbusters did it with the, the soccer ball out of the cannon on the back of the pickup truck, we have pretty much exactly that. It's still falling backwards a little bit. I want to see it just go like, it's like arching. I want to see it just go down. All right, that brings us to 288. So now instead of it going forward, I'm predicting it's actually going to kind of follow the car slightly. Let's see what happens. Okay, 288. That was it. Like, it, it, it was angling forward the slightest amount, but that was pretty much it, wasn't it? All right, you know I got to watch that again. Here we go. Look at that. I need to put this rocket up higher. It's not satisfying when it's just, it like, it's in the ground already. All right, I know this is probably going to be really, really stupid for, for my speed, but this is just going to be the quickest and simplest. This is just going to be the quickest solution here. Let's hope I can still get up to speed with this. 275. All right. Now, I was at 288, I think, was the ideal one. So now I just got to adjust my uh, angle again. All right. Here we go. 287. Should be good enough. All right. Here we go. 288. All right. We're getting there. Let's switch to the camera. Here we go. Couldn't have asked for a more perfect result. I think that is worth uh, showing a couple of times in slow motion there. So I honestly didn't think it was gonna be that great of a replication for, for an experiment like that. I mean, I knew that the rockets had conservation of momentum, but part of me was thinking like, 
Do they have their own propulsion? And if so, when it leaves the barrel, will it then gain like acceleration? Will it start accelerating from zero? But no, it actually appears that it has no additional acceleration after it leaves the barrel. It is just, it is just going at that default speed. And obviously if it is launched from a barrel that is already going that speed in the opposite direction, it just falls straight to the ground. So there's the answer. I think it was really satisfying results. If you guys have other experimental ideas that you'd like to see me do a uh, test here in Trail Makers, uh, let me know what kind of ideas you'd like to see tested. And if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more that you can find right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.